He was the latest result in machine intelligence. You've probably heard a lot about AI lately. Which can reproduce most of the activities of the human brain. But why now? Companies like Microsoft and Google have been working on artificial intelligence and its applications for years. But in late 2022, the Artificial Intelligence Research Lab, OpenAI, introduced ChatGPT, a conversational AI model that was both easy to use and, more importantly, available to the general public. For most people, this was their first interaction with a highly functional AI model, a chatbot that's capable of answering questions, conducting research, formatting data, and many, many more applications. For example, it can tell us that if the strings in this image were cut, the balloons would fly away. ChatGPT brought AI into the mainstream, kicking off an arms race as other major tech companies scrambled to introduce their own takes on the technology, like Google AI's Bard chatbot and Microsoft's Bing AI. In one sign of the ongoing AI gold rush, money is flowing into San Francisco's stagnant tech industry funding startups, hacker houses, and all manner of new initiatives, either building tools to work with these new AI models or finding ways to take advantage of them. According to the Washington Post, citing data from the investment analytics firm PitchBook, more than $3.6 billion have been invested in AI deals in the first quarter of 2023. Last month's Game Developers Conference featured an AI summit where AI-powered content creation took center stage, and in perhaps the biggest sign of AI hitting the mainstream, my 76-year-old techno-illiterate mom texted me last week, quote, wondering what all this AI business was about. So let's start with ChatGPT. Typically, when a person interfaces with a computer, they have to do so with specific commands, from something as simple as pressing a button, all the way up to coding out an entire program that tells the computer what to do. Conversational AI models, on the other hand, use natural language processing to interpret the way that people naturally talk into commands that a computer can understand. If you ever asked Alexa or Siri a question or spoken to one of those how may I direct your call customer service robots, it was using natural language processing to understand what you were asking and give you the answer you were looking for. ChatGPT takes things to the next level, or really like eight levels ahead, by not only understanding the things that people ask it, but replying with not just answers, but solutions. For example, you can ask it how you would clean the inside of a tank filled with piranhas, and it'll give you something useful. You could ask it to come up with date ideas or gift suggestions. You could use it as a creative writing assistant, asking it to generate ideas, come up with plot details, or provide feedback on something that you've written. Or maybe as an educational tool, helping students to learn a language by engaging them in conversation and offering tips on how to improve. You could even ask it to, say, generate a few unconventional uses for itself, as I did when coming up with the examples that I just gave you. Customer service, for example. I mean, just trying to get a graphics card running on your PC is a big pain in the butt. But if you have all the different use cases stored on what could go wrong and how to solve it, customer service can be much more effective, much faster, and solve your problems in seconds instead of hours. While ChatGPT is available to the public, for now at least, the newer, more advanced GPT-4 model is locked behind a paywall. This brings us back to Microsoft and Google and their own takes on conversational AI. For Microsoft's part, it partners with OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, and is already integrating that AI model into Bing Search. Currently, the AI-powered Bing chatbot is available in a limited preview, though it's not hard at all to gain access, and it largely feels like you're talking to a search engine, for better or worse. The bot can be set to give you more creative responses if you're looking for something written in a specific style, or to be more precise, which will emphasize including links to sources in its responses, which is great for ensuring it's providing accurate information. Google, on the other hand, has rolled out the standalone Bard AI chatbot, which currently has a waiting list, though I was granted access in less than 20 minutes. Bard is built on Lambda, which is short for Language Model for Dialogue Applications, which is an AI model that's built by Google AI. Where Bing AI excels at providing information, like a search engine, Lambda is actually better at understanding and responding to natural language. This will make it better for basically having a conversation. These chatbots, of course, are not all sunshine and rainbows and robots. For one thing, they're not always completely accurate and have been shown to sometimes present inaccurate or incomplete information, 
and sometimes going as far as making up answers whole cloth. I was trying to make a March Madness bracket of the best RPG developers. So I went to JetGPT with a list of RPG developers and asked for it to make it a bracket with themed divisions for each one. And at first blush, it did a really good job at it. But what I quickly realized is that these AI chatbots don't do a great job with nuance. You have to have hard data. And if you kind of let it freelance a little bit, it can get very, blur get very messy, very blurry very quickly. There's also massive ethical and privacy concerns. AI models are trained on historical data, everything from public web pages and news reports to research papers, encyclopedias, movies and TV scripts, and all of the historical biases that are contained within them. They also rely on a vast amount of personal data, things like people's online conversations, search history, and their browsing habits all things that raise concerns about privacy and data security. It's also important to remember that they're constantly learning from everything that people feed into them, whether that information is confidential or not. This came up in a number of recent cases as reported in the DigiTimes. Quote, in one case, an engineer uploaded faulty code and asked ChatGPT to find the fault and optimize the software. But as a result, that source code became a part of ChatGPT's database and learning materials. In another, someone asked ChatGPT to take the minutes of a meeting, which meant that the meeting's discussion and attendees, both of which were confidential, were stored on the ChatGPT database and could be divulged to anyone who asked. One other important point about these chatbots is that the copy they generate is, frankly, pretty bland. Because the text that they're generating is essentially an amalgam of every instance of that text in their training data, it really feels like an amalgam of every instance of the text in their training data. Blog posts that they generate are bland and samey, emails they draft are polite, non-confrontational, and dripping in corporate speak. And when I asked ChatGPT to write me a Mad Men style script, it sure got all the names right, but it lacked any of the incisive dialogue that made us hang on Don Draper's every word. I feel bad for you. I don't think about you at all. Regardless of the specific implementations, it's clear that we're at an inflection point in the adoption and use of AI throughout society. Writing in The Atlantic, technology critic Charlie Warzel cautions that, quote, nonstop hype around a technology that is still nascent risks grinding people down because constantly being bombarded by promises of a future that will look very little like the past is both exhausting and unnerving. Even further, an open letter from the Future of Life Institute calls for a minimum six-month pause on the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. For reference, ChatGPT runs on GPT-3.5. The letter, which has more than 15,000 signatures, including those of Steve Wozniak, Elon Musk, and myriad other tech CEOs and computer science professors, asks, quote, should we let machines flood our information channels with propaganda and untruth? Should we automate away all the jobs, including the fulfilling ones? Should we develop non-human minds that might eventually outnumber, outsmart, obsolete, and replace us? Should we risk loss of control of our civilization? Such decisions must not be delegated to unelected tech leaders. Powerful AI systems should be developed only once we are confident that their effects will be positive and their risks will be manageable. I know that sounds scary. But while the letter itself was unlikely to actually achieve its goal of a total pause, for example, Google has already announced that it will not commit to pausing AI development, the letter has undoubtedly prompted a global conversation on the subject. With more eyes than ever on the development and advancement of AI, the hope is that things will progress to a point where, as the letter says, humanity can enjoy a flourishing future with AI. Until then, actually I'm gonna let ChatGPT bring us home. Thanks for watching, and remember to keep gaming. For all the latest news, reviews, and features, be sure to check out IGN. Until next time, happy gaming. Close enough.